is Hi. Gilbert Gottfried, and I'm here with my co-host Frank Santo Padre, and this is another edition of Gilbert and Frank's Amazing Colossal Obsessions with uh with black blues singer <laughs> Neilis. <laughs> <Frank. laughs> He's Neilis. For a while there, I was adding a few body parts back, but I think I'm on the slide again. <laughs> the good news is there is such a thing as a knee replacement. Yes. <laughs> right. I don't know about the head. But he doesn't have, he was born without legs. Born so without insurance. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Hi. How are you? How many more of these are we going to do this summer? I don't know. We're yeah. running out of body parts. <laughs> 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 These I'm, are the dog days. I still of have tongue with which tongue with which to speak. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when I become tongueless, oh, I'm that'll really be tell, next. That'll be next. <laughs> <laughs> Frank's going crazy on the uh, on the effects button out there. That was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so Gil, yes. Who's uh, playing with their bottle? That's oh, Gilbert. Oh, that's, that's Gilbert. Me. I was like, I don't know, what the hell that was? That was me adding sound effects. <laughs> that's the sound of the booth at Nutmeg crumbling in on itself. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Raybone's limbs regenerating. Uh, this week we thought we would do a producer of the month episode. Okay. How do you feel about that? I. Yes, okay. Okay. Uh, we 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 do this on Patreon from time to time. We do producer of the month. We do Gilbert sings. Yeah. Uh, our listeners, our faithful listeners, write in. They post. You can do it too. Yeah. You can, not you personally. No. I'm yeah. speaking to our listeners. You can go to Patreon.com/slash Gilbert Gottfried and you can make suggestions for songs if you want Gilbert. Gilbert did that wonderful rendition of Goodbye Yellow Brick Road as yeah. Peter Laurie <laughs> that changed people's lives. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, he did I Am Woman. Oh, that's right. That was beautiful for the Me Too movement. Perfectly timed. <laughs> um, and people can make suggestions, too, for Producer of the Month episodes, and we will sort through them and find one that we can actually manage and pull off. And this week's is Ray's idea, and he wants to talk about the guest killer's and murderers of Columbo. Oh, excellent. Isn't that an interesting premise? That's an excellent one. Yes. I well, I mean Dick Van Dyke. There's a bunch. But how uh, many how many can you name off the top of your head that were podcast guests? Okay, well Dick Van Dyke's one. Yes, he is. Uh let's see how far you get with this. Lee Grant never did. Lee Grant was in the pilot. Oh, she was in the okay. second wow. pilot. Good okay. Second Columbo pilot. So Dick Van Very Dyke, good. Lee yeah, Grant. She's in Ransom for a Dead Man, which was the second. Uh, Larry Storch, I think, was on. <laughs> Larry Storch, he wasn't a Larry Storch was not a killer. <laughs> he wasn't a killer. No. But I have a feeling he may have done a guest appearance. I couldn't find Larry Storch. No? But as okay. long as we're doing podcasts. Oh, guests, listen, there's one other thing I wanted to ask you about. There you go. I didn't find Larry Storch. Did you find Larry Storch in your research? Yeah, did no. he ever play no, I didn't find N- Neilis Raybone? Like a guest no. appearance. I'll tell you who I did find. You got Dick Van Dyke and Lee Grant. Uh, Lee, yes, Dick Van Dyke's in a very famous episode. I saw Peter Falk and Lee Grant on Broadway years ago oh, yeah. in uh, Prisoner, Prisoner of Second, Second Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. That must have been great. That was terrific. Yeah. Of course, the movie was Lemon and Anne yeah. Bancroft, I guess. People didn't. Uh... Here's what I have. You have any other guesses at, at podcast guests who were killers? I also have two podcast guests who were victims. Oh, geez. How about that? <laughs> okay. My mind always goes blank when. All right, you got two of them. Yeah, you got yeah. Dick Van Dyke, who is the killer in the episode Negative Reaction from season four, which is one of the more memorable episodes. Yeah, he's a photographer. Correct. But you didn't get Joyce Van Patten, oh, who Joyce was the Van murderer Patton. in season six episode "Old Fashioned Murder." Oh, our friend Joyce Van Patten, who we adore. Uh, the other one you didn't get uh, was someone who co-starred with you, and I believe "Back by Midnight." Oh, and he was oh. a podcast guest. Let's see. Uh, oh, well, does Ed was... Begley Jr. mean anything to you? Oh, Ed Begley Jr. was the killer in uh, Columbo episode sixty-four called "Undercover," and one of his victims was Burt Young. 
<laughs> oh my god! I love that they also got celebrities to play the victims. Yeah, yeah, and that's what's fun. Funny. So they're only there for a few minutes, right? Yeah, and the last one I found, uh, did I find another killer? No, but I found two Gilbert podcast guests who were who were victims of murders on Columbo. Greg Evigan. Oh. Uh, in episode six. Or as I would have called him, Glenn. Glenn Evigan. <laughs> yeah. Glenn Evigan was the, was the victim uh, in episode 61, A Bird in the Hand. And Julie Newmar. Julie Ooh. Newmar, yeah. Uh, I lost the episode, but now, Julie Newmar was a uh, was a victim. Oh wait, I got a third one. Julie Newmar was a victim in episode seventeen, do- Double Shock, and Chuck McCann. Oh, was a victim of Robert Culp's. Oh, in episode twenty one, Double Exposure. So there you go. Robert Culp would have been a great guest. He would have been wonderful. We could have talked about Demon with a Glass Hand. Ooh. And all kinds of other Outer stuff. Outer limits. And yeah, written by Harlan Ellison, who also <laughs> yeah, passed yeah. away, which we haven't mentioned. I mentioned it on Facebook. And as far as a villain who came back twice on um, on Columbo was uh, Jack Cassidy. Correct. Correct. I was going to ask you about that. I have a little quiz for you later. Ooh, okay. But I'll save it. Paul, what Because you- I remember with the Jack, one of them, he's a magician. Yes, yeah, like and, a Harry Blackstone kind of. A, yes, yeah. and and at the end of the episode, when it's revealed that he's the killer, and he's being arrested, Jack Cassidy says to Falk, "He goes, I thought I commit the perfect murder," and he says, "There's no such a thing, sir. That's only an illusion." <laughs> That's, That's a pretty great. good Peter pretty good. Falk. That's a damn good. You've Peter been Falk. holding out on me yeah. for two hundred shows, <laughs> Frankie. Did you ever hear him do his Peter Falk? I just did, like a we minute did, uh, ago. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. How about Peter Falk singing "Climb Every Mountain"? Yeah. <laughs> you know, when, when Kevin Pollock does it, he moves his eye. Yeah, <laughs> it's very impressive. So I got a couple trivia points here. Jack Cassidy had how many appearances as killer? I oh. thought two. Three. Three. I don't, I don't know which they were them back. And one other person had three epi- appearances as a killer, which was Robert Culp. Robert Culp. Yeah, okay. that I knew. But kept bringing who, Robert had, Culp who back. had more than any other times was a killer four times? Ooh. You mean more than Culp and Cassidy? More than Culp and, and Cassidy were second place with three each. Jeez. Four times. And he, you know him from another, uh, mainly known from another series. Patrick McGowan. Oh, Patrick Ooh. McGowan. They brought him. He, oh, and yeah. then the there, was, there was that famous one with Donald Pleasance. Yes. I was going to I, I was going to ask you about that one, ah, too. Ah, now okay. I have to strike that one from the quiz. <laughs> okay. You know, there, are, there are two people who played who played a killer twice. Uh, William Shatner. Yes. Who I also remember, I think, was in Twilight Zone twice. Or was he more than twice? Uh, twice. Uh, twice at least. He's the know diner about. thing and the, the, diner, and the creature the on the famous plane. plane. Yeah, the, and the I think, terror those, I think that was it. Feet. And then the other killer, the other was a killer twice, George Hamilton. Oh. So there put, you go. Put his, put his victims in a tanning booth. <laughs> <laughs> Lock them in a tanning Locked booth. Lock them in a tanning booth. Yeah. And, and he had two, Falk had two of his friends on, uh, John Cassavetes and oh, Ben yes. Gazzara. Oh, yes. That's right. Yeah, I didn't know you were such a Columbo watcher. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to be um, able to stump you. Yeah. His second wife, Shira Denise, yes. I guess, yes. appeared in six episodes between 76 and 97. Yeah. A little so backstory too on on the show Columbo, which was created by the great William Link. It, who, they who, they wanted Bing Crosby. They, they you you got me. <laughs> that's who it. Was the other, that's who was it. the other actor they wanted besides Bing Crosby? Who else did they approach? Ooh, Crosby man. didn't want to give up his golf game. Uh, I I think um, it was Lee J Cobb. Ooh, yeah. Oh, he would have been Cobb. good. Yeah, Lee J Cobb. Director it, Richard <laughs> Irving convinced. Levinson, Richard Levinson. I think I think for a while they wanted Skelton Knags. Really? Yeah. I thought it was Scatman <laughs> Crothers. Yeah. <laughs> they wanted for Columbo. <laughs> Skelton. <laughs> Boy, we... uh, now Scatman Crothers would have been a great guest. <laughs> Let's do a whole episode called People Who Died Before We Started the Show. That's, that's that right. That would have been a great guest. That's right. Colossal yeah. yeah. obsessions of the yeah. dead. Then we'll then we'll do one called Better Podcast Ideas see, than the one we had. See, like Columbo. 
it was like I always thought at the end, somebody like a cop should come in and go, you know, you really don't have a case here. <laughs> <laughs> like there was one where he said, you know, with John Cassavetes that he was wearing a uh, flower in his lapel and then it wasn't there. And I thought any law, the worst lawyer in the country could have gotten them off saying, what the fuck are you Well, they had, they had to come up with 69 yeah, episodes yeah. of this thing. <laughs> So do you want to hear some of the other celebrity killers? Uh, no, 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 because I, you know, you're gonna I, wait? I'm going to save those for the okay. quiz. <laughs> okay, save those for the quiz. But you can give me other Columbo-related trivia if you have it. Let me see what I have Off of here. Gilbert uh, and Gilbert's comment about Bing Crosby. Yeah, Cobb was unavailable. Crosby turned it down because he felt it would take too much time away from the Lynx. And and he wanted to beat his kids more. <laughs> he needed more time. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted to spend more time beating his family. Yeah. That's it, a beautiful. It's <laughs> very time consuming. <laughs> that that and, old excuse. And it was Buddy Hackett who said, "You want to know why <laughs> Bing Crosby would beat his kids? It's because Bing Crosby couldn't <laughs> get a." Hard on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what other podcast? I ask you, ladies yeah, yeah, and gentlemen, you. will you uh, get Peter Falk <laughs> and Buddy Hackett impressions and a Skelton Canags reference yes. just tossed in? <clears throat> All right, I got. Here's. I hope this isn't part of your quiz. Let me try one question. Or right, as long as it's not about a bad guy. It's. Uh, what is Columbo's first name? Yeah, it's hardly ever said. It's not John. Uh, I is happen it? I happen to know it because it's a name that I care very much about. <laughs> I, I oh, it's it, Frank. It's Frank. Yeah. Oh. Well, according to this, I don't know who's. What have I got here? Colum. This is from a online site called the Columbo File. We'll give. We'll, we'll, they say we'll the lieutenant's first name is never revealed, but they have here a photo. It looks very much like it says Frank Colombo. I've it. seen it in other places. Yeah. We'll throw this out to our Colombo. Right. There we was to, that to... that really bad mistake of a show, uh, Mrs. Colombo. Mrs. Colombo, yeah. starring who? Oh, who was God, that? God, uh, the name, this name is right on the t- Was she in a Star Trek? She sure was. Also. Yeah, she sure was. Mulgrew? Kate Mulgrew. Yeah. Kate Mulgrew. Yeah. Oh, my God. God. Gilbert Godfrey. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Excellent. She's been in that very chair, Gilbert. <laughs> Has yeah. Gilbert, Kate Mulgrew been in here She's to record? She's been in there, yep. Yeah. Oh, how about that? <sighs> Not bad, Gil. That you exhausted? That one killed me. You exhausted? Yeah. I'd have, I'd have given my right eye for the Columbo information. <laughs> so is she Captain Janeway? Are we Captain any, Janeway. Any Trekkers, any Trekkies here? Um, <laughs> but who, Mr. Smartass, okay. <laughs> who was the first actor to portray Columbo on the stage? Ooh. The, stage. the first appearance. Well, let me go back. Uh, William Link and Richard Levinson. Uh, Link created the character. He's still alive, William Link. We should actually Ooh, okay. find him. He's 84. Uh, well, let's wait. Created yeah. the character. Uh, do, 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 do. This was first performed. Uh, the stage play was called Prescription Murder, and it was first performed at the Curran, or Curran, C-U-R-R-A-N, that's Curran, Theater in San Francisco in 1962. An Oscar winner played him. Do you know who it is? He was 70 years old at the time. Huh. No. Uncle Billy. Thomas Mitchell. Wow. Uncle Billy from It's a Wonderful Life. Tom, yeah. Thomas Mitchell was the original Columbo. He died of cancer while the play was touring and out-of-town tryouts. It was his last role. Oh. And then in 68, that play was made into a two-hour television movie. See, that him dying of cancer is something I would have come up with. And saved for the end <laughs> yeah. of the show. Yes. For as we were signing off. To make people kill themselves. Yeah. <laughs> It was turned into a two-hour uh, television movie. It's actually relevant because it's 50 years ago. There you it's, go. it's 68. We love to talk about 68 and 78. And uh, 50 years ago, that was the television debut. Well, I of remember Peter, of Peter Fox. It was Columbia. part of Name of the Game, wasn't it? No, it was part of the NBC mystery movie. Oh, mystery movie! Yeah, the Name yes. of the Game was its own series. Name of the Game was the magazine. 
with uh, the weird stuff that would yeah that was the show with Tony Francis Gene Barry and Gene Tony Francis yeah. and Tony and Gene Barry is relevant here because he was in he was the killer in the first Columbo oh. pilot uh, which was prescription murder yes that I was getting to <laughs> uh, but also it was uh, Columbo was played by another actor and I never heard of this actor um, he was played by Bert Freed. A character actor with a thatch of gray hair. I was sure that? you'd know who that was. Actually, I'm wrong. He was the first actor to play uh, Columbo, and Thomas Mitchell was the second actor to play Columbo. So I stand corrected. Uh, Thomas Mitchell, of course, I know. I never heard of Did you ever hear of this character? No. Uh, this actor, Bert Freed? Was Thomas Mitchell in a production of Death of a Salesman? He may have been. He may have been. Like as happy or He's biff. in a production of... Um, Oh, what uh, he's in a, he plays Santa in a bad production of Miracle on 34th Street. Ooh. And of course he was uh, he was the Scarlett O'Hara's father yes. in Gone with the Wind. If people don't know it's a wonderful life, shame on you. Uh, so Bert Fried was the first actor to play Columbo. Thomas Mitchell was the second actor to play Columbo. And who directed I know Rayburn's already on this. <laughs> who directed the first legit Columbo episode that was not a pilot? And the killer in that was Jack Cassidy. That's the one you're talking about. Yes. Murder by the Book. Who was the director? Was was not, he ever heard from again? After he was this? certainly heard from again. As <laughs> a matter of fact, not, not Spielberg. It is in fact oh, Steven yeah. Spielberg. How did you do that? Who I believe was 25 years old. Yeah, because he had also he directed that that three story episode of the Twilight no Night Gallery Night Gallery yeah, yeah. with Joan Crawford that, but great that must Joan have been Crawford. right either just before or just after Jaws because wasn't he 20, and, 26 and Roddy McDowell uh, before, well before Jaws that. no but Jaws he was in his 20s wasn't he I yeah thought? he was 27 oh I mean, okay but this is 1971 uh, okay. so no my math is off he was 20 he, he was I think he was 25 here when he, well people can look up his birthday yeah. through the math I know he was very young and I know that Peter Fox supposedly recognized his talent right away oh. and said this kid this well you say it this kid's hey, too good for Columbo this kid's too good for Columbo <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> alright let me quiz you he should do a movie with I don't know a shark or something yeah, he was doing he was doing television in those days, and yes, the Night Gallery. Yeah, he did a lot of. And then TV. he also did what was it called, The Duel? Well, that was the truck. Yeah, yes, that was, that was with Dennis, Dennis Weaver. Weaver. Oh, that was, what a yeah. great movie! And that, that, was, like, that was terrific. Terrific yeah. movie called Something Evil with uh, with Sandy Duncan. Uh okay, Gil. Here's the quiz. Let me see how many you already named a couple of these. Yeah. Um, suit of this comes from the Fun Trivia site. Um. Suitable for framing, pits the shabby-looking detective against an art critic who murdered his uncle and then tries to pin the deed on his aunt. Does this ring a bell? Oh, no. Name the actor who gained fame as a detective on TV's... This will give it away. Was it Ross Martin, John Cassavetes, John Cassavetes, Robert Conrad, or Nicole Williamson? You I'm don't know this say, episode. I'm going to say Ross Martin. Ross Martin is correct. Ah! Ding, ding. His, he, his, main, his claim to fame was Artemis Gordon in yes. Wild Wild West, but he Artemis played a Gordon. psychotic blackmailer stalking Lee Remick in the terrific silver screen gem Experiment in Terror, yeah. also directed by Blake Edwards, if people don't know that movie. Uh, this one, you knew. This actor played one of the most sympathetic killers in the series. He disposed of his spendthrift brother in order to save the family winery. In an episode called Any Old Port in a Storm. So that was the Donald Pleasance. Donald Pleasance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the choices they give here are Donald Pleasance, Charles Gray, Kurt Jurgens, or Patrick McGowan. They're trying to throw you off by giving you other Bond villains. Yeah. He <laughs> he also, I think in that, he, he when they're drinking the wine in the car, and he, he says, you know, he, oh, he tells Columbo this is an excellent choice. And and he says, it's the only thing I really cared about. There you go. <laughs> Another extra bonus. A yep. Donald Pleasance impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> but it's more popular than you think. The kids are, the kids are clamoring <laughs> for a Donald Pleasance impersonation. Most impressionists get up and go, but if it was Donald Pleasant, it might go <laughs> something like this. <laughs> Let's see if you were Raybone. You're a, you're a wonder. 
<laughs> Let's see if you or Ray Bone knows this one. The episode Swan Song featured this timeless country western singer. Ah, uh, Johnny Cash. Look at Johnny you. Cash. How'd you know that? <laughs> I was going to give you choices. How'd you know that? Yeah. Yeah. What were you talking about when you said you have all kinds of useless stuff in your head? That's oh, the- <laughs> boy, do I ever. Uh, in the episode Requiem for a Falling Star, uh, I know our Columbo uh, listeners are jumping on these or screaming yeah, at these, yeah. screaming at their device. Columbo <laughs> simultaneously pursues and idolizes a former matinee idol whose secretary died in a suspicious fire. Mm. Does this ring a bell? Was the was the killer played by Faye Dunaway, Betty Davis, Anne Francis, or Anne Baxter? I'm just grabbing out of my ass, I'll say Anne Baxter. You will be correct. <laughs> 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 Her famous portrayal of an attractive aspirant willing to do whatever it takes to become a marquee actress in All About Eve is the most notable of her 40-year career. Maybe you'll know this one. Uh, famous as a child actor from the Our Gang comedies, this performer plays a senatorial candidate who murders his campaign manager, then attempts to frame it as an attempt on his own life. Was it Jackie Coogan, Mickey Rooney, Robert Blake, or Jackie Cooper? Ooh. Well, we know two of those were not our gang members, so you got so you got a choice of two. Ooh. There you go. Wow. Jack- so it's either Jackie Cooper or Robert Blake. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Raybone, have a guess? I say, I'm going to wait for Gilbert because I saw I'm, it in the research. I'm going to say Cooper. You're going to be right again. <laughs> ah, three out of three. Wow. Yep. And what do we have for our guests this yeah, week? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Your old knees. <laughs> in a rare role as a baddie, this veteran of Disney films and a successful 60s sitcom, 60s sitcom shines as Paul Galesco, a world-famous photographer who mur- murders his wife, and then pins the crime on an unsuspecting ex-convict. That's the Dick Van Dyke episode. Yeah. yeah. I'll give you one more. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Let me see. How do we stump Gilbert Gottfried? Oh, no. You already mentioned Patrick McGowan, so we won't go to him. In Try and Catch Me, this veteran of stage and screen match wits with Columbo as a mystery writer who, ex- who exacts her own special vengeance on the shiftless husband of her now deceased niece. Who is this actress? Was it Lillian Gish, Helen Hayes, Geraldine Page, or R- Ruth Gordon? Ooh. I'll give you a hint. Yeah. She bit George Siegel on the ass in Where's Ruth Papa? Gordon. <laughs> very good. <laughs> very, very, very uh, good. You know, I was leaning toward that one anyway. Yeah. I was going to say. You did very well for a yeah. guy who was only guessing. Um, I'll go through these very, very quickly by season. Uh, yes, yeah, Spielberg directed the first yeah. legit episode, Murder by the Book. The killer was Jack Cassidy. One of his victims was Martin Milner. Yeah. Um, Robert Culp was the killer in the second one, then Eddie Albert, then Ross Martin, who we talked about, Roddy McDowell in season uh, episode six, Patrick O'Neill. Remember that actor? Yeah. Who was his victim in that episode? Ooh. Episode number nine, Blueprint for Murder. Mm. Boris Tucker. <laughs> Boris Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> Must have made an interesting chalk outline. Yes. <laughs> 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 uh, John Cassavetes was the killer in, ep- in episode 10 A Tude in Black Then Ray Milland Robert Culp again Richard Basehart Ooh. Richard Basehart And Baxter we talked about Leonard Nimoy was the killer In episode 15 A Stitch in Crime A Stitch in Crime <laughs> And then Lawrence Harvey <laughs> In the most dangerous match I do not have plots for these and Martin Landau in a dual role in the episode called Double Shock. And the person he, one of the people he killed was Julie Newmar. And the other was Paul Stewart, from Citi- also from Citizen Kane. Oh, wow. Who, who I believe we talked about. Yes. On this show with Tony Roberts. Yeah, he was doing that accent yeah. in Citizen Kane. Who, who was he in Citizen Kane? Uh, he's the... Uh, he he he's would the, talk like that. He's the, he's the reporter. 
No, I I think he was someone who worked for Kane. Is he? And he's doing like like a European act. Isn't he the reporter doing the doing the investigation? Do I have this wrong? Was it was it Alan Ladd who was the reporter? Or maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I think Alan Ladd was yeah, the you're reporter. Right. Yeah. You're right, you're right. And he's like he's got like white hair and uh Oh, because he says to him, he goes, Well, is there anything else that I can tell you? I have yes, many yes, yes, yes. Paul Stewart's uh, the manservant. Yeah, yes, yeah what's I the matter with me? Yeah. Yeah. What's the matter I with me? Tell you about <laughs> Mr. Kane. Yeah. Uh, Vera Miles played the murderer. Martin Sheen was her victim. Donald Pleasance, uh, Gary Coo- uh, Jackie Cooper. We talked about uh, Robert Culp. Here's your other Jack Cassidy episode: Publish or Perish. Episode 22. Jose Ferrer killed Lou Ayers oh. in episode 23. <laughs> Mind over mayhem. Johnny Cash, we talked about. His victim was Ida Lupino. <laughs> Richard Kiley. All these great actors. Yeah. That, you know, we talk about shows that are time capsules. This is yes. A, this yes. is one of those shows. But you make a, a great point that they, that they got celebrity, you know, well-known actors in for the victims, which is very unusual. Yeah. They're, they're only on screen for the first few minutes, most of these people, presumably. Robert you know, they're Conrad. Gone. Dick Van Dyke killed Don Gordon, somebody oh. we wanted on this podcast. Patrick McGowan. Robert Vaughn was a killer. Oscar Werner was a killer, and George Hamilton we talked about. And, yeah, they brought back Jack Cassidy again. Oh, here's the one where he's the music- uh, the magician. Now you see him. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. That's season 5, 1976. And and who was his victim? You'll love this. Nehemiah Persoff. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nehemiah Persoff, because it takes place in Vegas, and he's the casino owner. Correct, yes. And Nehemiah Persoff knows... That Jack Cassidy was a former Nazi. Yes, uh, yeah. that is correct. Yes. That is correct. Now, here's a Columbo episode that that should have been written by Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> <laughs> this is episode 40. It's called uh, The Bye Bye Sky High IQ Murder Case. Ooh. The killer was Theodore Bikel. Ooh. And his victim was Sorel Book. Oh! <laughs> If that's I, why I didn't write that one, I don't know how I don't know how you managed to not write that one. This may be my favorite though. Murder under glass, episode forty-two. The killer, uh, g- directed by Jonathan Demi, yeah, no less, a young Jonathan Demi. Uh, the killer was Louis Jordan, ah, uh. and his victim was Frank Pantangeli, Michael Michael V. Gotso. Oh, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, so. We actually managed to connect Columbo to some Gilbert Gottfried podcast guests. There you go. And Gilbert impressed once again. <laughs> I'd like to see some of those again. I forgot how good those were. I think I'm going to get those on DVD yeah. And, yeah. Do, and, and do a binge or, or see yeah. if they're on Netflix yeah. or whatever. I didn't know you knew so much about the show. I know. Yeah. And I, I never considered myself a major fan of Columbo. You did pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. What were the, You mentioned the... Um, you mentioned the uh, the NBC mystery movie. Yes. Columbo was a part of the N- NBC yes. mystery movie. Do you know why, as I take us out? Ooh. Uh, Falk refused to commit to the arduous schedule required for an episode that would air every week. Uh, in fact, it would mean shooting an episode every five days, so the network arranged for the Columbo segments to air once a month mm. on Wednesday nights. Uh, the high quality of Columbo... Can you name the other three shows that it debuted with? Okay, well, the was name of the music? game. No, that was that was oh. that was its own series. The oh, name of Mick the game. McMillan and Wife. Correct. Um. Uh, bu- 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 um. One was a western. Oh, oh, with with Dennis Weaver. Mm. Was that the one that was like like the Clint Eastwood? Yeah, one? Yeah, it was sort of a knockoff of Clint Eastwood's Coogan's Bluff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh God. Called McLeod. McLeod. Yes. yes. The other one was an actual western. The one that I was going for was Heck Ramsey with Richard Boone. Ah. Oh. Um, who was famous for Have Gun Will Travel? The high quality of Columbo, McMillan and Wife, and McLeod was due in large part to the extra time spent on each episode. It was called a wheel show. A wheel show coined to describe this format. How about that? That was the Sunday night, I think it was the, was it the Sunday night mystery movie or the, I don't know. There was one on Wednesday and there was one on Sunday and they called it the NBC mystery movie. And then they did it again. 
they yeah. they they repeated that formula. There was one with Tony Curtis called McCoy. Oh yeah. There was one with uh, I think the black actor James McKeachin called Tenafly. I think the Snoop Ten- Tenafly. The, I remember. I think the Snoop Sisters yeah. with Helen Hayes was part of the yeah. uh, was a wheel show. I can't remember. Our listeners will know. <laughs> and they're screaming. Yeah, Tenafly didn't last long. There was Tenafly. There was. Uh, I think McCoy. I think Tony Curtis was a con man. Who got out of jail yeah. and then solved crimes, and the, and definitely the Snoop Sisters, and I can't remember the other one. There was one. There was something called Faraday and Company, or that does any of this ring familiar. a bell? Yeah, I don't know. And the the miss the NBC mystery movies. That's that's good nostalgia. Yeah, let's hear a little Falk as we go out. Oh, oh, well, well, I I just uh old business. You I got, just remember you got old business. Yes, good. <laughs> Take us I, out on it. I, 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 uh, Darren, I got a call from Bill Macy. Oh, I thought you were going to say Jackie Mason called you. No. <laughs> How's Bill? Bill, Bill was, was sounded great on good. this call. Good, good. He was up. He was like, had a lot of energy. He was cursing us out. Did he sh- threaten to show you his dick again? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, he, he was so, so Bill Macy is still... Crazy as ever. He's a, he's fun. he's going strong. Yeah, Bill. Um, I have a Bill Macy theory. Let's hear it. Yeah. On the mini we did, when Darrow was trying to get him, kind of through you guys, to tell the story about when he was in the hospital. Yes, yes. But his wife was sitting next to him. Yeah. On the other side, oh, he didn't want to tell it with his wife. Sitting I think there. he kind of. I think he felt embarrassed, oh. and and he was just sort of pretending nothing Maybe. ever happened. Maybe. Bill doesn't strike me as the guy, who, uh, kind of guy who feels embarrassment. No. <laughs> anyway, that okay. we, we want to thank listener Ray Gustini for that fun idea. Yeah. Okay, okay. and to take us out, uh, Colombo. Ah, uh, excuse me, sir. I I don't. Uh, I know you're busy, sir. And I don't want to bother you. Uh, this has been Gilbert and Frank's. Amazing colossal obsessions. You know, the wife and I, we watch this show all the time. <laughs> this is our favorite show. Because, you know, my wife, she likes trivia. And, you know, she always get, she gets angry at me because if I don't know the name of an actor or something, so it's a very entertaining show. And neither one of us knows what the fuck Paul Rabin does. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a Columbo-esque takedown of Paul Rabin. I never liked Columbo. <laughs> I'll see you next week.